Step onto the cloud of Islam And you will discover the light of Iman Proclaim this message entrusted to you And the cloud of Islam Will carry you Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we welcome all of you here tonight to introduce our speaker, Ahmed Didad. Ahmed Didad is the director of the Islamic Propagation Center International of Durban, South Africa. He's a scholar of the Christian Bible who has been engaged for these last 40 years in Christian Muslim dialogue. The purpose of his visit to the United States was to meet uh, Jimmy Swaggart in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where they engaged in a very friendly debate. Uh, his itiner itinerary here in the United States, after Baton Rouge, he went to Tucson, Arizona for a debate, then to Lawrence, Kansas, and after this uh, debate, he, or th this lecture, he'll be going to Kansas City, Missouri. Mr. Didad is the uh, author of many booklets, for example, Christianity in Islam, or Christ, pardon, Jesus Christ in Islam, Is the Bible God's Word, Muhammad in the Bible, and The God That Never Was. Mr. Didat has attracted a lot of attention, especially from American scholars. He's uh, met in debate uh, such scholars as Professor Simpkins of the Johnson Bible College of Johnson, Tennessee, Dr. Joshua McDowell, Floyd E. Clark, Dr. Anish Sharush, Jimmy Swaggart, and Dr. Robert Douglas. Now I'd like to have everyone welcome our speaker, Mr. Ahmed Didat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي صدق الله صدق الله مرة نزيم Mr. Chairman and brethren the words you heard from my lips were a prayer from the Holy Quran the prayer of the Holy Prophet Moses. I was not trying to hypnotize or mesmerize you in any way. I can assure you that. This was a prayer uttered by the Holy Prophet Moses, according to the Holy Quran, when he was commissioned to go before Pharaoh and ask that his people be freed. Moses' interpretation, he cries to God, he said, Rabbish Rehli Sadri. He says, Oh my Lord, expand for me my breast, meaning make me brave. Qala Rabbish Rehli Sadri, Waya Sirli Amri, and make my task easy for me. Wahlul Ugdatam Millisani, and remove the impediment from my speech. Yafkahu Kauli, that they may understand what I have to say. So I feel that I have more need for such a prayer than Moses. Because in communication there are so many barriers, so many impediments in speech. And one of the greatest of impediments is psychological. You see, when one comes from another world, another philosophy, another ideology, addressing another of a different concept and ideas and background, the prejudice is there. And I pray to God that may he remove these impediments between us in communicating the knowledge about God and his ways. The subject, as has been advertised, is Jesus Christ in Christianity 
and in Islam. If I were to short circuit or quicken the explanation with regards to Christianity and Jesus Christ, I could quote you from some of the Christian missionary publications. The evangelists, the preachers, you see, they always talk about the three lemmas. It's a new word I came across in one of your publications, Christian missionary publication. Three lemmas. I never heard of the word before. But what they're talking about is three L's. Three L's. They say Jesus Christ, either he was a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. Have you heard that before? Either he is a liar or a lunatic or Lord. This is the Christian position. The bulk of Christians, then they say that he is Lord, that he is God. We will go into the details of the matter, but they put it to others, even to the Muslims. Was Jesus a liar? No Muslim can ever say he was, because we believe that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe. We believe that he was the Messiah. We believe that he was born miraculously, which many modern-day Christians do not believe today. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission, and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. So we can't say he was a liar. Was he a lunatic? No. We say he was no lunatic. He was the wisest of men. Was he Lord? We question that. You see, the Christian is giving us no alternative. He's strike cornering us. Either we accept this or that. It's black or white. We say, what about in between the two, black and white? There are endless shades of gray. Do you see them at all? I said, look, why can't he be a messiah? Why can't he be a me mighty messenger of God? Why must he be a liar, a lunatic, or, or God? Now, what is the Muslim position? Are you at the back, are you all able to hear me, all right? So the Muslim now, what he says is this, in the Holy Quran, whatever I say, it is backed up by my own holy book. It's not that I'm trying to placate you or trying to carry favor with my non-Muslim brothers and sisters in the audience, that if I say a few good words about Jesus Christ, maybe you in turn might say a few good words about Muhammad. That if I scratch your back, you might scratch my back. No, I assure you, that is not the reasoning behind what I'm telling you now, what I'm going to tell you. The Holy Prophet Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, this holy book of Islam, the Holy Quran, is mentioned in this book by name no less than 25 times. By name. The name Muhammad in this book, supposed to be the book brought about by Muhammad, concocted by Muhammad. The name Muhammad only occurs five times. Four times as Muhammad and one time as Ahmad, an alternative name for Muhammad. Five times. Jesus Christ, five times the number, the name Muhammad occur. Isn't it strange? Isn't it strange? The man who brings the book, his own name is only mentioned five times. And his opponent, his opposition, mentioned 25 times, if there is such a thing, as his opponent, his opposition. No, we say there's no opposition. These are, there is a brotherhood of prophethood, and they belong to the same brotherhood. The birth of Jesus Christ is mentioned in this book, the narration about the Annunciation and the birth. The name of Muhammad's birth, not leave out his birth, but where he was born is not here. Where he died is not here. His father's name is not there. His mother's name is not there. His wife's name is not there. His daughter's name is not there. Amazing, amazing book this is. Look at this. An, an encyclopedia of 1,920 pages. And in this book, the person who's supposed to have written this book, his own place of birth, where he died, no mention. His dear friends, Abu Bakr, not here. Omar, not there. Osman, not there. Ali, not there. Amazing book this is. It's unlike any other book that you have known or you'll ever know. 
you see, a unique book, unique from every point of view. There is a chapter in this book, and the name of the chapter is Surah Maryam. Surah means chapter, Maryam means Mary, in honor of the name of the mother of Jesus Christ. In this book, there is no such thing in the Christian Bible. This one I have in my hand here is the authorized King James Version of the book, uh, of the Bible, which has 66 books inside. It's a library or an encyclopedia of 66 books into one book form. The Roman Catholics, they have in their Bible, I think I have it here. This is the Roman Catholic version of the Bible. It has 73 books, seven more than the King James Version inside here. But out of the 66 of the Protestants and 73 of the Roman Catholics, there is not a book entitled Mary or Jesus. You have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and on and on and on, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, there's no Mary. Here is the chapter in this book called Surah Maryam, Chapter Mary. The birth of Jesus Christ is mentioned in this book, the narration about the Annunciation and the birth. The name of Muhammad's birth, not leave out his birth, but where he was born is not here. Where he died is not here. His father's name is not there. His mother's name is not there. His wife's name is not there. His daughter's name is not there. Amazing, amazing book this is. Look at this. An, an encyclopedia of 1,920 pages. And in this book, the person who's supposed to have written this book his own place of birth, where he died, no mention. His dear friends, Abu Bakr, not here. Omar, not there. Osman, not there. Ali, not there. Amazing book this is. It's unlike any other book that you have known or you'll ever know. You see, a unique book, unique from every point of view. There is a chapter in this book, and the name of the chapter is Surah Maryam. Surah means chapter, Maryam means Mary, in honor of the name of the mother of Jesus Christ. In this book, there is no such thing in the Christian Bible. This one I have in my hand here is the authorized King James Version of the book, uh, of the Bible, which has 66 books inside. It's a library or an encyclopedia of 66 books into one book form. The Roman Catholics, they have in their Bible, I think I have it here. This is the Roman Catholic version of the Bible. It has 73 books, seven more than the King James Version inside here. But out of the 66 of the Protestants and 73 of the Roman Catholics, there is not a book entitled Mary or Jesus. You have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and on and on and on, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, there's no Mary. Here is the chapter in this book called Surah Maryam, chapter Mary. Starting or beginning at the beginning of the birth of Jesus, so in this book, this translation, it has an index. At the end of the book, there's a very comprehensive index. What do you want to know? You want to know something about Jesus. That's the subject of this evening's talk. So you open up J, just like a dictionary, and it said, now let's see what it says about Jesus, about my hero, about my Lord, in inverted commas, about my Lord. So, I'm reading to you from the index some of the titles under the heading Jesus. Jesus, a righteous prophet, is a true prophet of God, says the book, the Quran. Not my words, 
This is what the holy book of Islam says. He's a righteous prophet. His birth is described in two places. Chapter 3, verses 45 to 47. Chapter 19, verses 22 to 33. He's apostle to Israel. His disciples, taken up like Adam, not crucified, no more than apostle, not God, not son of God. His message and miracles. He prays for table of viands. He taught no false worship. His disciples declare themselves Muslims. His mission limited. His followers have compassion and mercy. His disciples as God's helpers, as a sign, prophesied Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. These are some of the headings, subtitles, under the topic Jesus. Now, to, let's begin at the beginning, the birth of Jesus. In chapter 3, known as Surah Ali Imran, the family of Imran, Imran comes with the word, the father of Moses, the family of Imran. Chapter 3, verse 42, it reads, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Wa is qalatil malaikatu ya Maryam. Says, behold, the angel said, O Mary, Inna Allah astafaki wa taharaki wa astafaki ala nisail alameen. That God Almighty has chosen thee and purified thee, chosen thee above the women of all nations. Now such an honor is not to be found given to Mary, the mother of Jesus, even in the Christian Bible. That Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was a woman chosen above the women of all nations. Ya Marja Mukmuti, Lirabbiki, was Judi, Warka Imar Rakin, says, O Mary, worship thy Lord devoutly. Prostrate thyself and bow down in prayer with those who bow down. Zalika minam bay la ghaibi, nuhihi laika. So this is part of the tidings of the things unseen, which we reveal unto thee, O Apostle, by inspiration. Where does Muhammad get his knowledge from? About Jesus? He was an illiterate man. A man who didn't know how to read or write. Where did his knowledge come from about what he's speaking? So God Almighty assures him and through him assuring us that this is the revelation of God given to him. His knowledge is from God. The Christian missionary, the evangelist, the preacher, he says, no, Muhammad concocted this book. Muhammad wrote the book. This is his own creation. We say, look, he was illiterate. An ummi. I said, yes, maybe. But you see, even illiterate people, they can be geniuses, man who has had no formal education, learning. He can be a genius. He can be a great orator. He can be a great thinker. So why could he not have dictated, you know, his own creation? He must have come across other, he had heard about other things, spoken about Jesus and the prophets. And from whatever he heard, he can rehash the whole thing in a far more beautiful language than what he has been hearing. Why could he not have dictated it? We Muslims have to agree that that is a possibility. He could have dictated it. But to prove to you that it was not so, I want you, the audience, to agree with me on just one point. I don't want you to accept him as the veritable messenger of God, a true prophet of God. No, no, it's asking too much. Uh, the only one little request I make from you is to admit that Muhammad was an Arab. That's all. Is there any difficulty? Anybody, please tell me if there's a difficulty in you accepting that Muhammad was an Arab. He was not an Indian. He was no Eskimo. He was no Greek or Roman. He was an Arab. Any difficulty? Any difficulty? I want to know from you all. No difficulty. That is all. Thank you very much. Now, this Arab... In, now we analyze this Arab in the first instance is telling other Arabs. If he wrote the book, if he uttered these words, then he's telling other Arabs. He wasn't talking to the Malaysians, Indonesians, Africans. No, he was talking to the other Arabs, his own people. And he's telling the other Arabs that Jesus, I'm sorry, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was chosen above the women of all nations. Not his own wife or mother or daughter whom we Muslims believe, Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, will be the leader of the women of paradise. That's our belief. 
But her name is even not mentioned in the book. And he is going out of his way to tell his people that a Jewess, she was chosen above the women of all nations. I'm asking, please account for that. Why would an Arab go out of his way to provoke his own people and go and honor a woman of his mother of his opposition, if there was such a thing? Telling them that not my wife, not my daughter, not my mother, but Mary, the mother of Jesus. I say account for that. If he wrote the book, why would he do such a silly thing from the worldly point of view? It's silly. Because to me and to you, to me, my mother, there's no better woman in the world has ever been than my mother or my wife or my daughter. Why yours? Why Jimmy Swaggart's? You know, my opponent in a debate on Monday night. Why his? Unless I am forced, I am commanded by a higher source to say that Jimmy Swaggart's mother or his wife Frances is the best woman in the world. In the sight of God, she is the immaculate one. Who would make me to say that? Only God can force me to say that. On my own, never. My mother, my wife, my daughter. You agree? This man is honoring Mary, the mother of Jesus. The narration continues from chapter 3, now verse 45. It says, وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ So behold, the angel said, O Mary, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنْهُ That God Almighty gives you glad tidings, the good news of a word from Him. اسْمُهُ Masih, His name will be the Messiah. Translated Christ. اسمه المسيح هو عيسى بن مريم Jesus the son of Mary وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة held in honor in this world and in the hereafter Jesus held in honor in this world and in the hereafter ومن المقربين and of the company of those nearest to God as the Christian would put it sitting on the right hand of God we would say yes metaphorically so it is in the sense, we Eastern people, when we say the man on my right hand, meaning my advisor, my prime minister, on my right hand, him could be sitting on my left hand. But he's my right hand man. It's figurative, metaphorical, it's not literal. He says that held in, res in respect in this world and in the hereafter. Women and Muqarrabeen. Why you kallimun nasa? And he will speak to the people who Jesus. He will speak to the people, fil mahdi wa kahlan, in childhood and in maturity. Wa min salihin and he shall be of the company of the righteous. When this good news is given to Mary, the mother of Jesus, she responds. She says, "Qalat Rabbi anna yakunu li waladun, walam yam sasni bashar." She said, "Oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me, physically, sexually?" The angel gives the reply. Said, even so, Allah creates what He wills. Whenever He decrees a matter, He merely says to it, Be and it is. For God to create is an act of will. Whatever He wants to create, He wills it and the thing comes into being. For Him to create a Jesus without a human father, just like that. For him to create millions of Jesuses without father and without mother, just like that. But who's going to breastfeed those little Jesuses? You should need the mother. Jesus needed a mother. So God gave her the good news, and he says, so was Jesus Christ born. This the Muslim believes without any proofs on the outside, without any...